In this video, we are going to learn about uh, the cell membrane. Just as a review um, of what a phospholipid is, because it becomes important, a phospholipid is a fat molecule that is both hydrophobic and hydrophilic. It has two long fatty acid chains, which are hydrophobic, and it has a phosphate functional group at one end, which makes this end of the molecule hydrophilic. And this is another representation of the same molecule and a smaller, rep simpler representation of a phospholipid is shown like here. So this is a hydrophilic head, that's the hydrophobic tail. Now, the plasma membrane is a bilayer of these uh, phospholipids. So you can see they are two rows, one row on the top and one row on the bottom. The hydrophilic heads are pointing towards the outside and this you, one side is outside of the cell, the other side is inside of the cell. Um, both of these areas are aqueous, so therefore these hydrophilic heads can interact with water. The inside of these bilayer is hydrophobic, where these hydrophobic side chains, the hydrophobic fatty acid chains, are interacting with one another. Now notice that the plasma membrane is just not just made of phospholipids. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in here, which we're going to talk about in further detail. But the model that scientists use to describe in general a plasma membrane is the fluid mosaic model. So we're going to see what each of them mean. So the fluid refers to the fact that the plasma membrane is more like olive oil rather than butter. So what does that mean? That means that the, there's a lot of movement in the plasma membrane and the plasma membrane is very um, flexible and which this is important because the plasma membrane needs to be dynamic and it should allow for movement of molecules within it for really cell function to happen. So why is plasma membrane fluid? It's because of this kink in this fatty acid chain. If this kink wasn't there, these fatty acid chains would all come together and cling together using hydrophobic interaction and make the plasma membrane uh, more like butter rather than um, olive oil. Now the mosaic section of the fluid mosaic model refers to the fact that the plasma membrane isn't only made up of one thing, it is made up of many things. There's uh, other lipids in here, there's carbohydrates, proteins, so the fluid mosaic model says that the plasma membrane is fluid, there's a lot of movement in it, and it's mosaic. It's made of many different parts. So let's go through the different parts of a plasma membrane. There's lipids in there, and two different types of lipids. Um, there are, this is the phospholipid bilayer, which is basically makes the body of the plasma membrane, um, and then we've got cholesterol. Now, cholesterol is very, plays a very important function in a plasma membrane in, the, in that it um, regulates the fluidity of the plasma membrane. Proteins of the plasma membrane, you see all sorts of different types of proteins. We've got proteins that sit on the uh, two faces of the plasma membrane. Uh, these are called peripheral membrane proteins because they sit on the periphery of the membrane rather than being inside of it. We have integral membrane proteins that span across the membrane and a sub form of these integral membrane proteins are the ones that have a hollow inside to allow molecules to pass through. These are usually called protein channels. Then um, to some of these proteins are uh, attached um, carbohydrates, which collectively we call the carbohydrate plus the protein a glycoprotein. 
and these glycoproteins perform important functions in cell-to-cell -cell interaction, interaction of the plasma membrane with the, with the extracellular uh, space. Um, so speaking of carbohydrates, carbohydrates attach to two different parts of the plasma membrane, either to the protein parts or to the phospholipid parts. So when the, when the carbohydrate is attached to the protein, it is called the glycoprotein. When it is attached to a lipid, it is called a glycolipid. And again, similar to glycoproteins, glycolipids are involved in cell-to-cell -cell interaction, receiving signals, and in responding to signals that are coming from outside of the cell. Now here, is a um, studying tool for you uh, and I purposefully chose an image that is different from the one I'm using uh, so that you see if you can identify the components that we are uh, we're talking about it, this image so quiz yourself and see if you can um, identify uh, these elements and this is interactive so I just revealed this the first answer. Um, so see if you can quiz yourself and what you can do is stop the video from advancing and um, go to present mode in the presentation. And uh, by just by clicking, uh, you can one by one, you can reveal what's behind these boxes. So I'm going to skip this. So there are also a couple of questions that you can answer and then come to discussion to see if you answered them correctly. 